Hi everyone, welcome to Drupal South and thanks for coming to my session. Today I'm going to share my experience with um, content migration. Let's start with some introduction of myself. So I'm a Drupal developer at Move, and I'm a back-end and front-end developer. Uh, recently I've been focusing on uh, web accessibility and content migration. Drupal API um, sorry, migrate API in Drupal. It is a three-step process, um, extract, transform, and load. So extract is where you get the data from your source, and, but the raw data you're getting may not be the right, in the right formats that will work in Drupal. So here is, and that's like the process plugin used to transfer transform the data into something useful in, in Drupal. So what can we do with migration? There are once of migration, maybe you are doing a site upgrade from Drupal 7 to 8. You can be doing, uh, rebuilding a site from a non-Drupal to a Drupal site where you need to migrate the, the contents across. Or maybe you are doing some bulk update uh, on, on the content. So maybe populating the data in a new field or you are transferring data from one content type to another. There's also continuous migrations where you can do like regular update. Maybe you are getting some weather information from the forecast or maybe you are getting the stock price uh, from share market. Um, you can also do a like, uh, centralized um, content repository where you fetch data into different satellite sites. So migration source. Migrate API supports a wide range of um, data source. So you can import from CSV, uh, you can do XML, JSON, JSON API, and you can even do SQL query if you have access to the database. But in some cases, uh, exporting data from the source may not be possible, or maybe the data structure is too complicated, or maybe it is too hard to handle. So what can you do? There's content scraping, and there are a number of libraries that allow you to scrape content from a website. What's good about it is like what you see is what you get. So image is an image. You are not getting a tokens that you need to process data to, to, get, get, to get your data. It also works for Drupal or non-Drupal side. The downtime, the downside of it is like the content, you don't have much structure in it, uh, and it's also harder to deal with things like entity reference. So let's see some examples. Let's say your clients want you to migrate a simple block site like this one. What are you dealing with? Looking at the front page, you can see um, each article, there's a title, there's a day, a summary field, and from now, inside the articles, we got more fields like the text, HTML body, uh, there's internal links, there's PDF downloads. There's also other hidden elements, uh, the publishing status, menu, URL alias, 301 redirects if you want to divert your, your traffic from the old path to the new one. So what are the challenges? Let's look at the date. Here is the date format you are getting from the source, but in order to import into a date field, um, you, that's the format you need, you need to put in uh, into the Drupal. Taxonomy, taxonomy um, you are getting a list of link or a list of tag link, but in the Drupal world, you need to first create the terms and then you are handling the target IDs uh, in, the, in the term fields. The same things for images. How do you download the image, where to save it? And again, like, um, you need to create a file entity and you are dealing with the file ID in, in the file field. So what do we do? What tools are available? 
there are a number of plugins that we can use to, to do the job. And I'm going to go through some handy ones. So Concat. It is a good tool to combine a number of fields into a one single string. So in this example, um, we are converting an address field into a one single address, one line address, like if that's the, the format you need on your, on your new side. Or you could be doing the other way around if you want some structure in, into, um, in, your, in your structure, uh, in your address, the explode plugins allows you to break up a single string and put it in an array format. Substring plugins allows you to take a segment of a string and just output that uh, one segment of it. So in this example, uh, we are just getting the states from, from the address. And these are all familiar because like, uh, they are the PHP functions. In some cases, um, you, the values you are getting are not available in the source, and you can um, use the default values. Like in these examples, uh, we are getting the note offer set it to the UID 12, like for all the articles, because like it's not something you can get from the source. Static map is another good tool to use. It allows you to create a one-to-one -one mapping from one set of data to another set of data. Like in Drupal 7, uh, user role um, is stored in a, uh, you're storing the, the row ID, and you can do a mapping for that uh, in Drupal 8. So date formats, we have seen this before. Um, the date you are getting may not be, always be the ones that uh, you can use straight away and we have uh, the format date plugin that can transfer the date format. So let's look at um, entity reference. Entity reference isn't that complicated if your data source knows what the target ID is, which is possible if you are doing like Drupal to Drupal migration. But in most cases, uh, this is more likely what you are getting, just a list of uh, tag names. And that's where the entity lookup can be helpful. It basically takes uh, the names, the tag names, and look it up in the system and work out the ID, the TID it used uh, for, for the tag field. And if you have a new tag that doesn't exist in the site, um, you can use the entity generate. So during the import, if it find something doesn't exist on the side, uh, it can generate the field, I mean generate the, the term on the fly. Migration lookup is another awesome plugin. It allows you to reference an entity that is created from another migration. So in this example, we have like, um, like you're first importing all the users, and then while you are doing the uh, article, when, when you import the articles, you are able to reference the author from a user that was created in the first migration. Files. The download plugin allows you to grab a file from a remote source and save it into a destination and then we can use uh, the migration lookup to uh, populate the, the file ID into, into a file field. But I will recommend using uh, the file import, um, which is a very handy tool. Uh, it basically combines uh, the download, the creation of the file entity, as well as the migration lookup in one go. So this is all you need from your source, if you know the URL of your file, this is how you can do the import. The same thing for images, uh, you, can use, you can use the image import plugin to, to do the magic. URL, so if you need to handle URL redirect or alias, um, redirect is 
uh, is entity in Drupal 8. So here um, we can do a simple migration and it will import the data into the, into the um, redirect entity. So uh, that's the destination plugin that we are using. The same thing for alias uh, with the URL alias uh, that's destination plugin. Uh, you were able to give your content some uh, SEO friendly URL. And there are more. Callback plugins allow you to use PHP functions to process your data. In this function, I'm using, I'm calling a function from Drupal core to convert libraries into ptest and pr. And that's the exact function it is using in the test filter. Pyline, Pyline itself is not a plugin, but it allows you to do a number of plugins sequentially. So in this example, after we are doing the input filter, uh, the input test filter, we are for, further running and other plugins to do a string with page to fix some typos. And if there is none of the plugins available, um, you are always welcome to create your own one, and it's not hard to create your custom plugin. So there are a lot of process plugins available, and I just cover a few of those that is highlighted. And there's more from a control module. So here are some useful link um, you, can, you can check out if you are interested in content migration. And thanks. Any questions? Um, thank you. So first of all, just a question for you. Have you ever experienced the continuous migration? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, so here's um, a life problem that we have. Um, so we have a website that we do continuous migration using migrations, and um, the same issue, um, the other lady she talked about, which is <clears throat> when the migration gets stuck. That's bad. So that's, yeah, basically, the, I think, like, I'm not sure about now because, um, now in uh, Drupal 8.7, migration now went into Go. Maybe it's an issue that has been fixed. But our issue hasn't been fixed, which is it gets stuck, and then we need to reset the migration. So yeah, that, that have this is, been solved, do you think? That's bad luck um, when that happens. Um, but like, um, when you, like, so the, I didn't go through the trust commands. Like, you can do trust command uh, migration import dash dash update, it would do the, uh, it would force an update. So uh, it will, uh, if you're stuck in the middle, uh, if you can work out what the problem is, then fix that and you can do an update from the beginnings and just like, just do it again. And also there is uh, a hash tag or hash key that you can set. So it will just look for the differences. So if there's something updated, it only update those ones, so it won't like if you have thousand, uh, if if you have a thousand records or a thousand contents you need to migrate, uh, and and why like, you are only like making one changes, you don't need to migrate the thousand contents. Uh, you can set a um, hash key, uh, so, it, so it finds if the content has been updated, it would just uh, it would just migrate that one content. And same things for if it breaks down at the, in, in the middle, if you have the hash key set up, uh, it won't migrate the first 500 that already done. Uh, you can, it can pick it up from uh, where, where it, it, it fails and then uh, do the rest of the content. Um, like, yeah, like actually, like we didn't really have an issue with the high watermark, which is, for example, if we have like 1,000 items to be migrated, even if 500 were done, that's fine. We can continue. But the problem is with the migration status. You know, when it says like it's still processing, 
Yep. Then we need to do like drush migrate reset. Uh, migrate reset. So yep. basically, what we did is in, on every cron run, we will have to do migrate, uh, like drush migrate, then then reset this migration for all the migrations, for example. Yeah. So we had to do it all the time, which is fine. Like it's working with us, but it's mm. like it feels um, fiddly. But do way. you know what's the problem? I think like, the the first thing you need to work out what. Causing the um, it, it can be anything like it, yeah, it like can be like, <laughs> if, like even for the simplest reason of just um, if like connection timeout that's oh. it and the migration is stuck forever so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if that can be handled in the migrate API but you might need to on top of that do some checking and make sure or it depends on the data size like it could be like what you say it could be anything uh, but yeah like Migrate APIs does its work, uh, and uh, if there's other things causing the problem, then um, like yeah, you probably need to fix that the so problems in in order to get things working. Just to add, the migrate is actually quite stable. So if the internet connection is the issue, for example, we're dealing with large set of data, how we beat it is. Uh, separate process to download the data, so it doesn't matter CSV, JSON, so you get it onto your machine, and then you process it locally. So that was one of the issues, because my great API is actually, um, it never stacked on me, ever, apart from timeouts and all that. So maybe look for the process that is not migration that gets the data to your machine, uh, and then process it. Yeah. Any more questions? Thank you. Um, just one comment for anybody using Entity Generate. Be careful. Oh, okay. It's very useful yeah. um, and does have its place in the world, but it makes an entity and it, you have no record of it in your migration maps. So when you start doing things based on your maps, like rollbacks or whatever, or lookups, you, you can get out of sync and get confused why things don't work. That's right. That's entity, right. entity Generate does not follow the rules of an ETL process. It breaks the rules. So break it, at, use it at your own risk. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Thank you very much. Um, I was wondering if you have <coughs> experience like a scraping a site, like you have <coughs> an HTML website that you want to scrape, and from there migrate. Like do you have a strategy, for example, have an intermediate tool to, to create a, a JSON file, or maybe reading directly from the HTML <laughs> directly into Migrate. So have, have you done that before? So I didn't quite get the question, can you? So if, I'm oh, sorry, if you are scraping an HTML site, yeah, yeah. like what would be a good way to, to do that? Like directly query the HTML of the site or maybe have a, a tool that will read the site and, and create a, a JSON representation and then use that JSON file to migrate in, you know, into Drupal. So I was wondering if, if you ever have to do like a HTML scraping, how would you do that, if you have experience with that? How do I do it? I think, yeah, um, I think uh, what you suggest, like putting in a JSON uh, format, I think that's good. And um, so you, you first scrape all the pages uh, from, a, from a website, put in a JSON format, uh, f put in a JSON object, and you can, like, yeah, like if you want, like you can do some changes like with the JSON format uh, before you, you kind of like import to, uh, into Drupal. Yeah, so yeah, I think that, that will work, yeah. Just to add on top of that, we were scraping uh, squeeze matrix CMS and it had a broken HTML. Uh, in fact, it wasn't just one pattern, it was broken on some pages. So I would really recommend you have the intermediate step uh, to really process, make sure that the whatever tool you're using, whatever you're using for scraping, is actually the data you're getting is right. But once we had the body, then we actually made migrate to turn it into a paragraphs. Um, so it depends again how trustful your data, you really need to make sure that, the, that your data is actually valid, because otherwise you'll, yeah, you'll get all sorts of stuff. And the question from me is, what's your preferred way? Do you have a rule of thumb when to use which format, like XML, JSON, CSV for data? 
Do you have preferences or? Uh... It really depends on what is available, it's like from from your source, like or from your clients that you that you want to do the migration. But I think JSON is pretty good. Um, it is a well structured. Um, it's a well structured um, um, format and. Um, yeah, like um, and and yeah, it's we have been using uh, quite a lot of like uh, JSON objects for, for for migration as well. So yeah. All right. Thank you. Last question. Anyone? All right. Thanks, Kelvin. Big round of applause. <laughs>